Okay, so today I'm going to show you how I made this kind of like three-eyed, two-nosed wood spirit. I'm also going to show you how I carved these really deep lines in this beard. So uh, let's start at the beginning uh, with just a normal wood spirit block out. And essentially to make this three-eyed wood spirit, I just started off with a block of macrocarpa. I think it was uh, about two and a half inches across maybe a bit more or less can't quite remember so i pretty much making the noses on the corners like you usually do and try to make the width sort of like so that middle eye sits in the middle might have been a little bit off but you can sort of see me there i did starting on the second nose there so that middle eye is going to become the middle eye and the little oval there will become the one on the third side. It's sort of like, uh, you know, I've never done one of these before, so it's a bit of hit and miss. But I think it actually turned out pretty good. But like, if I was to do it again, I'd do it slightly different, maybe. I'd make that block a little bit narrower. And so we're going to come across a few problems in this, and it's mainly to do with the eyes. Everything kind of else works out really well, but the problem with the eyes is the pupils kind of like have got to be facing in certain ways. I could have done sleeping eyes, that would have been uh, saved me a lot of trouble actually, but uh, I decided to do open eyes, and I didn't quite get it exactly right, but it's pretty good. Anyway, so we're putting in the nose there, and we are using the cutsel extreme flame bear and if you've watched any of my other videos you would notice that I have put in a small little picture of the bear that I'm using that usually corresponds to a link in the description and those links are usually affiliate links and that all, all that means is that I make a little bit of money for if you use that link and with cuts or you actually save five percent as well on the purchase so everyone's kind of wins and it's really a way I can sort of make money so I can make more videos. So um, you don't you don't tend to get rich on YouTube uh, making Dremel carving videos, but it's just nice to sort of cover costs. And you can sort of see I have got it mostly blocked in now and we're coming across sort of like problems as we go along uh, I'm really trying to make that middle eye kind of sit between both faces which is kind of difficult because it's sort of like leaning towards the other face so we're just going to make it as as good as we can and where we we're in the middle there uh, we're going to have the mono eyebrow <laughs> you know what I mean that eyebrow is going to be sort of like the same all the way across so it sort of like joins nose to nose it's kind of doing my head in this carving, eh? It's sort of like so weird. So the, when I came up with this idea, I was actually looking at gargoyles um, and the ones without water spouts, what are they called? They're called grotesques. And there was a few of those and they kind of had like multiple noses and multiple eyes, uh, kind of shared eyes between the noses, but they were a little bit flatter along the profile. And I thought that's a pretty cool idea. I wonder if you could do that in a wood spirit. And so today we are doing that. Um, it's it's really bizarre to do these kind of carvings. I quite like these things because they kind of make you think, and it kind of makes you actually think about how things are shaped as well. Especially when you have to kind of make them in a different way. So the middle eye has got to kind of face two different ways if you get what I mean and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the noses look very similar and that cheek there well the the cheek below the middle eye that was kind of a little bit weird to do as well because it didn't fall back onto the kind of where the hair normally goes so um, yeah it's all all fun and games today <laughs> so we are using the cutsel taper bear there starting to look pretty good And here we go, the problems with the eyes. So you can sort of see the eye on the right, the part nearest the nose sort of like goes into a nice V, whereas the outside of the eye sort of tapers off 
towards the ear. So we've got two noses here and one eye. So they've both got to be the same on each side. So that's what I'm doing there, trying to make it look the same, which is going to look a little bit odd when you're looking at the other eye with this eye, but uh, hopefully it'll look all right. And I'm using those inverted cone burrs to put a uh, iris in. There we go. Um, so they form a little nice kind of ring in the eyes. Got to get, kind of get the perfect size there. Now I did a review of those uh, bears and I'll leave a link up in the top right hand corner about them. They come in handy for these kind of things. And I'm using an even smaller one here to put that little black dot in the middle. I think it looks pretty good. So I've got that one on the left slightly looking over to the left. And the one in the middle I've got slightly looking over to the wood spirit's left and the eye on the other side of that is looking directly ahead so i think that will kind of work out pretty well we will see it kind of looks pretty good there kind of looking ahead slightly off and kind of looking over to the well you were right Okay, so when it comes to beard carving, what you want to do first is you want to get the general shape of the beard and the moustache. So you can sort of see I'm blocking it out there with the Cutsall Flame Extreme Burr. And so I'll just get that general shape thing ha happening there. I might get a little bit of the undercuts happening, but not that much um, detail. And it all depends on how big your beard is. Now I'm going for really deep kind of cuts in this one. So I've gone back to this sort of like wheel cutter from Dremel. Uh, and this one's a slightly bit of a dangerous burr. You've got to be very careful with it. Uh, I've got a glove on there. I've also lowered the speed so it doesn't burn so much. Um, but it is brilliant for getting really, really deep cuts. You wouldn't want to do this on a smaller carving. Uh, this is probably about the smallest you're going to get. And you also don't want to be too aggressive with this accessory because it's on an easy lock and that tends to sort of like move a little bit. And this is a cutter burr from Dremel. It is really nice. It's got a nice big kind of circumference there. And what you could do is if you have got cutter bears from other kind of like cheaper ones that you can also use those. But this is kind of a soft wood so it leaves really nice sort of smooth lines in there. And I start to start shaping the hair there and the beard with this. And then I go into finer bears and maybe back to that uh, wheel cutter as well. It's sort of like just a sort of using a mixture of different burrs. I don't make a beard the same way every time. Um, on smaller carvings, I might only use those inverted cone burrs on a softer wood. It sort of all changes every time you carve. That's what makes carving so cool. So um, you can sort of see it's starting to take shape there. And you can sort of see me, I am looking at both sides and sort of like just putting it in parts that are really, really deep and leaving other parts. I could have sort of want that kind of like layering effect. So, um, and kind of want on each side of the mustache kind of a little bit more even. And so I've gone in here with one of those T-shaped diamond burrs and sort of like just tidying up lines as well and putting narrow ones in up towards the top where the nose is because you couldn't really get in with that Dremel cutter bear up there because it's just a bit large. So you sort of go to the smaller burrs as you kind of get closer to the nose as well and put some finer lines in. As you can see here, I'm going up to the nose with a quite a fine inverted cone diamond burr. Uh, they're quite good for that. And just trying to get to things kind of look a little bit more natural, so sort of not so mechanically made. It's kind of hard to kind of explain, but you kind of get what I mean. 
it's sort of so the lines aren't perfectly straight or anything like that but sort of like flowing and once I'm kind of happy with it I'll go in with this little tiny disc sander now I don't have a link for this particular one there is another one kind of similar to it on uh, Amazon but if you ever see a one like this can you let me know because then I can put a link in to it but I, I just get these ones at a local hardware shop and um, they're pro they're, they don't have any description on them so I can't actually look them up but yeah so I'm just going in and sort of like taking off any rough edges and sort of smoothing things out and just sort of making things really kind of nice you don't have to do it with one of these little disc sanders you could do it by hand sanding as well 